hear our voices. Oh, I don't know, actually. Can they? Is it no? working? Yeah! Is it working? There we are! Yes. Oh, I Great see success! You. <laughs> Great success. That is a success. That is brilliant. Hello, everybody. Hiya. Uh, hiya. Hiya. I answered, the phone. I answered the other phone the other day. I'm like, hiya. <laughs> I was like, I've, I've never answered the phone in that way before in my life. And I did. Are you sure? Yeah, apparently, well, I have now. Um, hello, everybody. Hi, Julia. Julio. Hi, Zach Technician. Uh, hi, John. Hello. Um, what are we doing? I've not, well, I've not done a stream. I've not done a stream for like you've been seven on holiday years now. I know. <laughs> and what, how do we do? How do we stream? How do we what stream? Do we do? Well, Where, well who, who are we? <laughs> we are Media Molecule. Hi, my right, name is okay. John. Uh, I'm I'm here with with my good friend Tom Den. Hiya. And today I just thought, <laughs> hiya, I thought we'd just do a bit of a sort of workshop style. Um, people in the chat can ask questions, and we try and work through some of you know the problems you might be having with dreams or like some, yeah. you know don't worry about how complex or simple it is we're just trying to sort of go through and we're trying like work some out and lots of them i might not even know the answer to straight away i go oh i'm not sure but let's try and do a thing and we'll sort of try and work it out together because yeah. yeah, i have to... ways to do that has anyone stumped you yet ever we ever stumped you on oh yeah like like all the time yeah all the time and i'm i'm, I'm sneakily go oh well, i'm not quite trying to do that but i do this thing that's similar and then like smoke and uh, well, you know but answering, <laughs> answering a question with a question yeah that kind of thing um also uh, i have to say my um as people lots of people know i'm having i'm doing lots of work on my house and my brother derek is here he's a he's a builder like i used to be and he's outside at the moment um laying down some concrete so if you hear sort of n loud noises and stuff like that, or he comes in, he's like, "Oh, John, how do I do this?" You'll know it's my brother Derek. So you That's can just say right. hi, Derek. Yeah. Hi, Derek. Hi, Derek. 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 Big purple hearts in the chat. Um, <laughs> so that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. That's who that's we are. Doing. Right, I'm back up to speed now. It's fine now. Everything is fine. Um, Excellent. So yes, as John said, if you've got questions, also let's start the let's start the day by wishing a happy birthday to Dream Bubble. Our lovely community fan site run by Danny Barbara and an amazing team. They are celebrating five years today. Five. Since they five, launched. Five, five years. That's amazing. Five. Isn't that great? And they've done that so much for the community and they are they have. beloved. <laughs> Happy birthday. It's very nice. Um, they dropped a lovely uh, retrospective video on Twitter today. Uh, they'll be doing a live podcast on Friday. Um, that you may or may not hear me and Jamie on. Who knows? You will. Knows? They've said it. They've said it. <laughs> um, but yes, five years, amazing. Thank you for everything you do. I uh, hope you're eating lots of cake today. Um, so I just wanted to do that before. We That's very nice. I'm a big fan of Danny. We we hang out from time to time, and he's yeah. We've not seen him now. He's such a rad dude. And next time I see him, I give him a hug. Big hugs. <laughs> <laughs> a hug. Right, so, John. Without further ado, have you got some? Has has questions died? Yeah, filling, I think we can we can start off with a really easy one. Okay. Uh, I, I, you never know. Well, you never know. It might not. You be. never know. Never. Uh, Milt, uh, our good friend Milt on Twitter, um, is struggling to make a shockwave like a uh, shockwave in dreams. Oh, um, okay. Like, any tips on how to make a shockwave in a puppet would be helpful. I keep struggling with physics, so a I wonder if it's like. Puppet. Uh, like how to make a puppet be affected by some sort of shockwave, maybe. Okay, so do we want do we want the visuals of the shockwave, uh, and do we it want it like, like struggle a, with, yeah, like a round shockwave, like a boom, or do we want it more like a sort of like push, kind of like force in one direction? I think um, let's do a, for a force in one direction because Milt makes side scrollers. Ah, okay, that's let's do that then. Okay, so what I'd probably do first. And this is sort of we're, we're going to sort of talk about the processes. Is I know that I'm going to involve a group at some point in some what we call sort of helper objects. So I'm going to make a helper object first, and I'm just going to do that by making a cube and stamping that on the grid and making sure that's on the grid by just grabbing it one more time and using the resize to grid just to just to check it's on there. So this is now my helper cube. 
and we know it's on a grid, on a one by one grid. In fact, we could even shrink it down so it's definitely just on a, a one by one grid, and then that makes it even easier to um, look after later. So let's just get it to make sure it's that size. Okay. That's perfect. So we've got the one by ones in the center, it's on that. And I'm just going to color it. I always color my helper objects red most of the time, or blue, or very primary color, so that later when I'm going through the level, I go, ah, that big bright red cube is probably something that's not supposed to be seen, but also it probably shouldn't be deleted, you know, it's, it's going to be like a, yeah. a helper object. So I make it not collidable and not visible. And this is going to be good for later. And since it's um, an invisible object, I don't need to waste graphics on it. So go to your sculpture detail and just whack it right down. So it's just about a cube still, and then it won't cost you much. Okay. So we now have our invisible helper object. I'm going to use this to add the logic and the special effects. Nice. So first thing I'll do is stick a chip on there. That's going to help keep our, mic, uh, our logic nice and organized. Use the auto realign on the grid on the um, microchip as well and save it. And then that's also going to be on the grid, which is just Maybe unnecessary, but I like keeping things everything nice and neat. And since we want a shockwave, and you mentioned uh, like 2D, and I assume that hasn't changed yet, I'm just yeah. going to do a shockwave going from left to right here. Well, we're going to try anyway. So let's have a look. Uh, I assume it's going to be like a limited distance, like a whoosh, kind of thing. So yeah, I think like a, oh, yeah. What I would do just send is it forever. Send into it forever the, into the, into the realm. We could do this. There's, there's different ways of doing it. If you wanted to do it forever, you'd probably use movers in physics. And if you want it like a limited uh, distance and very consistent, I tend to use timelines and keyframes. So I've got a timeline here. And what I want to do is you're going to emit this object basically, and it's going to do all the stuff it needs to do, if that makes any sense at all. Um, I'm also going to make sure it's grouped. Now this is a, a slightly weird thing. Imagine I'd done this first because I should have done this before I set the microchip because I want the microchip on the the group. So I'm just going to stick it back out so it's it's now on the group. Because it means I can move things around inside the group and then move the, the whole group or omit the whole group separately. And if I if it ends up that I don't need it as a group I just go in and delete that. But if it does yeah. end up being a group, which I think this will, because I'm going to put some paintings in here in a second, I can still delete that, but it's then got the grouped part of it. So just to begin with, often, if you're not sure, just make it a group to begin with with one of your helper boxes. And then then you sort of got all bases covered. It's harder to turn something into a group later without like messing up your logic. Luckily, I did it so near the start that I, I only stuck a timeline on it. It didn't, didn't make any difference. OK, so. Let's get our, let's make our shockwave. Let me think, how am I going to make a shockwave today? Because there's like loads of ways of doing the same thing. And I've just, different, I'm just trying to think, purposes. what would look cool? Okay, I've got an idea. <clears throat> so I'm going to use probably the impressionist one. And I'm going to get the ruler. And we're going to just draw a straight line out like this. It's going to be maybe a bit smaller, so it's, the shockwave is going to go for longer, or be more detailed anyway. Yeah, about that, I think. And then I'm going to stretch it, because um, stretching them, which is a new feature since the uh, VR pack, will help make it look a bit more consistent. Uh, yes. We're going to want to give it a nice, like, I don't know, magical uh, pinky colour, I guess, something like that. Like Reddish boat says that's a neat looking guitar, John. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it definitely is. Uh, uh, and then what I want to do is, because I want it to go in that direction, I'm going to clone these pieces in here. I'm going to use the precise move to do it. And I'm going to kind of clone them back like this. So it's almost like a, a V shape. You may 
may not want your shockwave to be V-shaped, but that's what I'm going for. And then we put the animation on. We don't want it to loop. We're going to want it to just happen once. I'm going to pulse it with a short trail length. I'm going to turn off the hide and visible stuff at the moment. Oop, I'm not because that is in laser the guitar. It is a laser guitar. I'm just going to take that out of the group a second. So when I hide the invisible stuff, that thing itself isn't invisible. Let's just make sure that's all visible. So yeah, that's fine. Okay, so. Effect or effect? I'm just answering it. Zyphil was asking what we're doing, and you're creating ah, a shockwave to an effect. 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 Uh, yeah, so, yeah so, so it's an effect which is going to affect, affect something else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's both. Object. It's object, yeah. Okay. So there's my shockwave. Um, I only copied it because I thought I'd put it inside the group, but I haven't yet, so don't worry about that. And then we're just going to tune this to get the sort of shockwave effect that we want. So I'm going to fade the beginning and end up. I think that will look correct. Let's turn up the speed a little bit. Uh, let's put it on loop while I'm testing it. And then I can make sure I've got the sort of speed how I want. And then you can adjust some of the other bits and pieces, like if I clone it a bit. Less clones. Less distance. Different sizes. Turn that capacity. That one, that one, pass you down. Okay, now <clears throat> this shockwave just comes out and keeps going at a consistent speed. And what I think looks good with yeah. shockwaves is if they go out fast and then they slow down. And the reason this sort of happens and feels natural is you think like when you throw something soft and light, like particles like dust, it will go out quite fast as you like throw, but then as it meets the air resistance, it slows down pretty quickly. And that's why you sort of see shockwaves expand quick and then slow down. Um, yeah. Unless they're just really powerful ones and then they just, you know, Go for disappear it. off into the, the ether. But in this particular case, I think it's going to be a short range one. <clears throat> so the way I'm going to do this is use a keyframe at the beginning of the timeline. I'm going to say the animation speed nice and fast, something like crazy like that. Exactly, 5,788. <laughs> yeah. And then copy that one and then slow it down to almost nothing, but not actually nothing. And this might require a bit of tuning, and then I'm just going to blend between them and then copy that one and just say permanent. This is just so it, whatever happens after here, it, it continues. So you'll see it comes out and then slows down. That was obviously ah, yeah. looping. So now this is where I've got to tune, tune the speed. So let's make it not loop. And I'm just going to pick up my um, DualShock a second. Let's make it easier to do this. I like the way as soon as I pick up the moves, my uh, my face goes at the bottom and then it never comes back, even though I've picked up the yeah, DualShock now. Like, yeah. I'm gone. You can't see me. John is You're no gone more. forever. I'm gone forever. John is but a voice now. Yeah, dismembered It's voice. just that you become your imps. Oh yeah, there we go. That's it. Hello. That's the, uh, my name that's is John. Yeah, I'm gonna bounce around all this time. <laughs> I uh, don't have to remember you... to smile now, though. <laughs> no, yeah, because yeah, your imp is doing it forever. Uh, for those of you asking questions, I'm making a note of everyone that's getting asked, and we will uh, answer as many as we can throughout the stream. So don't worry if you feel your questions getting missed. It is. Yeah, sorry. I, 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 we'll we'll, we'll move on as fast as we can. Yeah, but it's fine. So there we go. No, so you can see now how it comes out fast, and then slows down so it's like yeah like a shockwave and you can tune um how this works you know by adjusting the curves and stuff i won't spend ages doing this i was quite happy That's with the linear cool. but you sort of get the idea and this is a good thing to to yeah. mess around with and then if you just the um fade out time a little bit you can make them fade at slightly different times which looks cool okay we can adjust the trail length to be how we want it to be. Do, 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 do. I think that looks, that looks good to me. Okay, cool. Yep. I'm happy with that visual blast. You could finesse it quite a lot more, but I think we're, yeah. we're good with that for now. Yeah, so yeah. then I want the shockwave to knock you in this direction. So <clears throat> what I do is I get a four supplier, because four suppliers make good shockwaves. 
and we're just going to we know that the blast wave goes across here so I'm just going to make it the rough shape of that blast wave and this moves around like a trigger zone so, okay, so from there and I kind of think it, it went to about there again we can tune this and you can even put a bit of a fall off so the, the blast is more powerful the closer you are with a little bit of a fall off so any nudges you can ah, get to smart. the end which is pretty handy <clears throat> and there we go that's what I want to do and that and what I might do is because you can scale it up this is where it gets interesting yeah no that's exactly what I want and then we want it to push in a direction. Sorry if I mumble sometimes. I try and <laughs> figure things out as we're going. It's we're just work gonna in process. Work in progress. We're just going to keep it on four speed five and fifty for now. It's good to keep things on default to begin with while you're trying stuff out. Yeah. So I'm going to get this using these keyframes, or using separate keyframes if you want. You can double up on them, but I'm just going to to make it easy to understand. I'm going to keyframe it starting there, where the four starts and then keyframe it out with the shockwave like that so hopefully what you'll see is it will move along with the blast so if, if I put an interpolation between it it would anyway and again keep changes at the end so it stays where it is so it needs to go a little bit faster so it's probably equal to that there we go. So that is going to ah, okay. basically push things. And what we're saying is we only want it to push enemies. So you can label everything an enemy, a foe, and it will push. So you won't push yourself, which would be cool. So that's blasting out there. And we want it to obviously turn off when it gets to the end. So the last thing to do is more keyframe, which is this being powered on. Make sure it's powered off naturally extend that keyframe out so and you can even put a little bit of a fall off so then it gets weaker at the end so the blast wave is only going to be working while that's on and just quickly add a sound effect so like sound mode go to search search for sound effects go to the mm1 here and we've probably got combat so it's probably going to be there be like magic or something no let's do guns and blasters magic. Sounds good. Mm. I love going through these sounds. Bubble launcher is what we're going to go for. Bubble launch, yeah. Nice. That, that seems to work for me. And lastly, well, not quite lastly, there's a few more steps yet, yeah, John. No, that's cool. Hold your, hold your horses. Jumping ahead. Jumping ahead, there I am. Cool, blimey. I want to make sure that that is inside this group so let's turn the invisibility on so i can stick it inside there i can delete this now since these two are grouped together and that's just gonna do its thing and it's all about sort of adding some nice final touches so i'm just going to get uh, the paint tool and it's going to do something like this let's go draw some squiggles make sure that they're about the same colour, nice pinky colour, glowing. Speedy, pulsy, not looping, short pulses, a whole bunch of them. Not quite so many, not quite so spaced apart, different <laughs> sizes. You can try the different um, ones as well so then if we push it okay so that's too slow so we want it to be super fast kind of like that maybe some different sizes fade in and fade out almost it's not quite the effect i wanted but we're getting there it's happening it's happening, it's happening. Oh, there we go. So what I'm also going Pressure to do is I'm just going to use that same keyframe that we did at the beginning to do the same trick really fast out. 
slow right down. And this one over here, we can just duplicate that, make it permanent. Okay, okay, let's see what that looks like. So I slowed those ones down too much, so we're just going to tune that to make sure that I don't slow them down too much and make sure they come out nice and fast. Okay. Another trick I do with these effects is when they first come out, put the time offset to zero, and then by the end, using this one, you put the time offset to maximum. What that does is it means they come out all at the same time in like a burst, like an explosion. They don't like trickle out. Yeah. But then they fade and they disappear at different times, but over the length of the, the thing. So it means they sort of go out of sync over time, which is cool. So they don't all appear and disappear at the same time. They appear at the same time and disappear at different times, which is which is really important. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if that worked. Just got to keep duplicating this end one. Almost. Oh, did I not? I don't think I am. Um, slowed it. Oh, no, I did. Okay. Maybe that's still waiting for us. Too slow, sorry. <laughs> Almost. It seems like they're, they're doing... To me, it looks like there's a slight odd bug there. Oh, I know, right. I, know exactly, I know exactly what I've done. Oh, he knows, he knows. I know, I know. I'm going to do these on a separate one to this top one. Because they're, they're sort of putting it slightly oops, out of what I want. This is all for these little neat touches. These are the things that always take a long time as well. You're like, yeah, the <laughs> finessing. This won't take long at all. And then... I enjoy the word finessing. Good. Finessing is a great word. Great I mean, word, isn't it? To be honest, the game design really is Finesse. tweaking numbers like this, finessing, like over and over and over again. And it kind of you feel like, am I wasting time here? Like, because, you know, I've kind of done it. But actually, honestly, keep going. Because never settle, what makes right? it like, feel... No, exactly. Until until you're happy. Like, that's, and that's the whole thing of, like, take the time you need. Like, take the time you need exactly that. Make sure you don't you don't compromise on your vision. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. This is getting pretty good. This <laughs> the last twenty percent takes eighty percent of the time. This is unbe unbelievably true. It's like it's the world we live in. Really much, and then I'm just going to make those. Bit shorter, and I think we're we're we're, we're done for this. I quite like that. <laughs> there we go. And I'm just gonna then move them into further along, a tiny little bit further along, so it looks like they sort of form. I think that's yeah. I'm happy with that. That looks great. Yeah. 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 So then it looks like there's a hole. Blast coming out, and I can even yeah, look brighten, at that. This, brighten this thing up as well. It looks like it needs to be brighter to match, but yeah. And if we make this actually blow up the environment, we we'll get a bit of light on the ground later. Okay, let's go into <laughs> is this going to be studio lighting? Beach Corp Death Ray. <laughs> I mean, it could be. I'm not sure Beach Corp know <laughs> anything about Death Rays, to be honest. No, you know? I don't know if that's in there. Uh, in there. Uh... I forgot the word I was going to go with. Portfolio? Uh, portfolio, yeah. You know, I don't know the if word? they'd be hired for uh, the death rays. <laughs> okay, let's... Um, I mean, definitely not. They're, they're completely legitimate above board. Yeah. Company, yeah, obviously. Unless, unless you want a legitimate above board death ray. Yeah, uh, in that case, you know, they could... They could then you're fine. Deliver yeah. something to you. So we've got to check if the... Um, it actually works. So this thing is going to be called Foe, and it's going to be movable. Make it not too heavy to begin with. So let's see if it knocks it over. See if it knock it over. Now, is that just moving because it's moving, or is it? Oh, it's, it's hitting the ground, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or is it actually like slightly getting nudged here? Because it depends on the power of these things, you know. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, it is. I can see it. It's getting pushed nice, back a little yeah. bit. So that's no, cool. So now this is where we tune the force supply. So let's just make it stronger. 
There we go. So then if we make it into a pile of boxes, because yeah, they're always in piles, and they're on their own. Yeah, boof. There we go. So that's kind of how you make it. That's, I mean, that's nice. one way. There's, there's loads yeah. and loads and loads and loads and loads well, and loads like and loads a, of ways. Way to do it. But that's, that's kind of a quick stab at it. And it kind yeah. of works. And you can just, you know, tune no speed because obviously that, that looks like it's coming out there much faster. So, you know, just yeah. just the speed. So there you go. Now it's going the same speed as the thing done. Ta-da! Nice. And Amazing. then you just, you, so you, just, you just admit that, by the way, when you're finished. You know, admit it in front of your character. Do that and then get that group. Okay. Yeah. That group. Emit that every time you want to fire, and then it will do its thing, and then just make sure it dies after a couple of seconds with your emit settings. Nice. Okay. Uh, well, next question. Up. Thank you. Right. Uh, so I think going off the back of this one, I think this one is quite a nice segue. Uh, Zypher was asking a minute ago about how to add a weapon and uh, visual effects of things like a dust cloud forming when a helicopter lands. Ooh, dust cloud. Okay, let's Which just I think is like a similar kind of idea, like mm -hmm. with what you were doing with the paint strokes. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so one thing with a helicopter and the dust cloud landing is the helicopter, which would be the thing making the dust cloud, will be getting closer or further away from the ground. So you need to know where the, the ground is. So the first thing we're going to do is make a thing that can detect where the ground is. So. Again, I'm just going to use a helper block. Luckily, I have one already, so I don't need to make a new one. So I'm just going to pull you out of there. We can delete that blast wave now. Going to be gone. Be gone, blast wave. So this helper block is going to help us measure the the ground. And again, I'm going to group it because I, I suspect I might need this as a group. So what I'm going to do is get the microchip so we can keep the logic nice and neat and your friend for measuring ground distance is a yeah. laser scope but be warned they're a little bit more expensive than some other gadgets because casting rays is just you know computer programming nice intense yeah. heavy yeah so we're just going to point that facing down towards the ground and we're going to extend it and you only need to extend it as far as the sort of maximum height that you'd want the dust cloud to be so helicopters it gets further away or whatever it is your spaceship um it won't be creating dust blurt forever so i would say at a guess i'm going to say a meter for that and then i'm going to do a, a fall off so i can say that the dust is weaker you know the further away you get or more visible the closer you get and more sort of you know turbulent and that kind of jazz okay <clears throat> so now we need to make the dust storm and then we're going to use this laser scope to figure out where to put it so let's make a dust storm so i'm going to do this by turning the grid off selecting a splat which is quite a good one for dust i'm going to turn on surface snap and then Let's make it a white colour so I can see what I'm painting. Oop, that is green, John, not white. And then, because it's going to be helicopter, <coughs> I know it's going to like, <coughs> excuse me, swirl around in a circle and perhaps go out from the middle. So I'm going to do some swirls like this. And then I'm going to do like some bits outwards like that. This is just a guess. So the, yeah. the I haven't tried doing this before. So the interesting right. thing is when you when you do this, you kind of do something and you go, I think take your sort of best stab at it and get to the end and go, what are the lessons I learned from that? Which were the good things and which were the bad things? Yeah. And then you can sort of iterate on it. You know, not very often is your first attempt going to be the one that that works. So you know, keep at it if it doesn't work the first time. Yeah. So I'm going to ruffle it a little bit in past it up. so it's stuck up. Um, for dust, I like to turn on maximum waxiness because then you don't get these sort of like dark black shadows underneath and make it super matte. And obviously turn down the opacity so it's more dusty colour. Um, warning, if you turn down the opacity when you've got um, hide invisible stuff, you can't go below 5%. So make sure that's obviously you can, you can tune that. 
um, select an appropriate color, something like that. And then we're just going to uh, watch it and see if it's moving. So there we go. And we can adjust the speed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it onto Jet Trail. And I'm going to slightly animate it. Again, I'm going to want to make a group here. I'll explain why in a second. So I'm just going to go in and steal one of these cubes. I'm just going to group that with my put it on grid. Put it on grid, John. Don't get don't get too excited. <laughs> <coughs> so now my dust in this block are a group, which means I can now animate this thing inside and move around. But then this will move. I can move the whole group. It's a separate thing later. So the reason I'm doing that is because I can now action record this dust and I can move it around kind of like this a bit random Not really too much and because it's on jet trail see how it the swirly bits that are coming out are now you know uh, yeah. um, they, they're natural they're not just like a dead straight line they've got some yes. interest to it and you can adjust the amplification and the playback speed of the action recorder to make it look even more like how you wanted or you can just re-record but i think that looks pretty good now okay let's tune the paint a bit more i'm going to say fade in and fade out so it disappears towards the edge and let's just try and do a couple of copies um rotating around a disc yeah, that looks good but not too many maybe just because <laughs> you get some dust going up into the air as well yeah it does not just go sideways It's pretty rad. So there's our swirly dust storm that the helicopter's going to create. Yeah. Excellent work there, John. So I'm <laughs> just complimenting myself casually then. <laughs> <laughs> nice work, oh, John. Dear. Nice work, John. Well done, mate. Well done. Um, Thanks, John. <laughs> talking to the Twitter account again. I am. No. Thanks, John. Hi, John. No one. No worries, Me and Tom are the same person. I'm just really good yeah. at ventriloquism. Yeah. yeah, you're doing two voices. Can you imagine? <laughs> oh dear. Um, let's stick a microchip on you. This action recorder can just live inside that group so we don't have to you know, try and bring it with us later. And then I'm just going to, again, there's, there's a few ways of doing this, but for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a follower and I'm going to go to the output page of the laser scope and go to the followers output an input page and I'm going to say the position is where I want the follower to go to. So we can check that out by pressing play and seeing if the, that moves over to there. Yeah, it does. That's great. So then all we need to do is tell that follower to go a bit faster. Um, go a bit MC faster. Alchemist, uh, in, as, part of this, as part of this demo, uh, can we get a technical explanation of what exactly Jet Trail is doing? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, in a second, uh, sh yeah, it, cool. it won't make any sense here. I will, I will show you. So there we go. So that's moved to there. But if you look, what we want is the floor to be a certain offset below the um, where we're actually trying to move it to. So on the follower is the position where you want it to follow. So I'm just going to mark that down as the center and the floor. So this is like where the laser's going to hit in relevance to the smoke. So about there looks good. Yeah, okay, so then when we watch it, that moves it over in the right position. Okay, great. Then finally, I'm just going to stick like a... This doesn't, these don't have to be invisible cubes. This could have been, this laser could have been directly on your thing. But I like doing it like this because then I can save this as a separate object and then yeah. stick it into my one helicopter and my other spaceship and then update it later. But I'm just going to make a, a very, 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 very quick helicopter model. <laughs> as oh, here we as go. Do. What colour is this what? helicopter going to be? It's going to be this colour yep. for yeah, that reasons. Yeah. Nice. No idea what I do. Oh, what, what? Do you know the pinpoint point of that colour now? Almost. Right, you know exactly almost. where that colour is, yeah. 
Give it some <laughs> like that. Give it a couple of windows with cube. I just I just like sculpting. You got you got to get some sculpting in every so often. You know. Yeah, man. Okay, someone mark the timestamp that John said he's going to make a helicopter quick, and then mark the timestamp when he said when he said he's done. Oh no! Now there's pressure, Tom. Well, <laughs> I see. I, I, I bought it on myself. Yeah, man. Gotta give it some little landing skids, something like that. But let's turn this grid off so I can make it nice and smooth. I mean, I this really is going to be. A, I wonder if I can link another question to this. Uh, uh, there was a how do I question earlier that I wonder if we can link to this as well. We'll find out. And of course we'll I need some, need some rotor blades. So helicopter's done but I need some rotor blades. <laughs> so now with rotor blades you don't want mirror. What you want is kaleidoscope down to two and it kind of looks like a mirror but there's a key reason you do that for specifically for rotor blades or propeller like items if i turn down to a finer grid as i would as i twist this one left the other one goes right you see which makes sense for the where the draft, you know, if this is spinning anti-clockwise, you can see that this one will push draft down and this one will also push draft down. If it was a mirror, they'd be cancelling each other out in a really strange, horrible, not entirely realistic way. And I'm just going to... Oh, God, blimey. It's not going to let me get that in, is it? Oh, yeah, it is. No, it's not. Yes. Nope. Oh, come on. It's because it's... Uh, there we go. Yeah, just shoot those blades in a bit. Make them a bit cuter. There we go. Mm -hmm. And finally get a joint. I don't know why I'm wasting so much time on this helicopter job. So, on while you well, as you're ex, uh, uh, going on to joint to joint uh, jo getting a joint here, got that word out at the last at the last. You did well done. Congratulations. Um, I was asking at the beginning, like it was after a quick uh, like a quick overview of what. Um, let me start that again. Uh, <laughs> Slyro uh, was one of the first questions today. Was saying how do I use joints? So I guess ah. this is a good time to answer. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I've done, done it already, yeah. though. <laughs> you did it, man. Uh, no. <laughs> I, uh, I, let, me, let me just do that again one more time. Yeah. So the ethos of joints is you you click on the parent, which usually for, uh, that's which is a technical term for saying, but it just usually means the bigger thing is the parent and the smaller thing is the child, which kind of makes sense. So in the case of a helicopter, the parent is the helicopter and the child is the rotor blades. And you just click on anywhere on the helicopter and anywhere on the child. It really doesn't matter uh, except for your OCD. And then you grab the joint. This is the important part, the bit in the middle, the pivot. You can grab that, press grid realign on it. And so you can realign it to the grid, which I know that this rotor blade is put on. You, and then I can just line it up with that grid like that. And so you can see, I'll turn X-ray on, Oop. turn grid off, the sort of physical representation of that joint, you see. You don't have to try and line these ends up. You just, that pivot's the only thing that matters. Right. So that's how I use joints. Turn it to a motor nice. bolt, make it spin a bit faster, and we should have like a, a reasonable helicopter. Let's make it spin even faster. Well, there it goes. I've just realised it's it's spinning backwards, so John. So it would be. It's going to be going down. It'd be trying to blow itself into the ground, yeah. So <laughs> max that out. <laughs> Minus no. The left-handed. Yeah. Helicopter. Yeah. And then we right. just make sure it doesn't make sure it's light and doesn't collide with things, and then it spin nice and should spin nice and freely. Okay. Anyway. There is our, our little helicopter. I'm not entirely sure, actually, why that's not spinning very fast. Have I given it? No, it's not. It's got low to strength. It's got low to speed. Hmm. How peculiar. I mean, it's not collidable, so there should be there should be no reason why that is. It's very light. 
Oh, there we go. I, I've, I, I don't even know how I fixed that, but I fixed it, so, you know, hooray. There we go. Anyway. Hooray, done. I, I just died. I, I, bugs. <laughs> okay, so I got my helicopter. I'll stick that in that group. Oops, I only stuck the helicopter body in that group then, so let's make sure I get both of them. Stick that in the group. And we want the laser to go from the bottom of the uh, helicopter, because that's where the dust is going to be, obviously. So again, like the mover, you can just grab that point. So I'm just going to put it slap bang under the helicopter like that. There we go. That's perfect. And now I'm just going to do some helicopter animation with my supreme helicopter animating skills. So here's the helicopter, flies over here, and don't worry, you won't see the dust moving at the moment because it's, I'm animating. Actually, scratch that, I just realised that I didn't grab the group, I grabbed the, um, just the helicopter inside, so that dust is definitely not going to move, so I've got to make sure that I grab both of them. That's better. Okay, so move the helicopter and go up into the air and then get lower again and go in the air. Oh. Uh, so oh. you, would, you would notice that the dust is just always there no matter where the helicopter yeah. is. And in fact, when it disappears, what happens is it will go to the middle of the world, it will go to zero, 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 zero when um, it's not receiving a signal. So the last thing I want to do now, just to tidy up that logic and make it all work beautifully, is I want to say only when hitting do I want this mover to move with any speed. So I'm going to say if I've hit something, um, go for it. So you see when I'm not hitting something, it will go to zero, zero speed, which means it won't try and go back to the middle of the world. It'll just stay where it last was. You could actually say like follow the helicopter or something but that's finessing later and then I also want the dust to be more powerful the more I've hit something so with that in mind all I'm going to do is get a keyframe uh, tweak the dust I'm going to say become more opaque I don't know like 23 and animate a bit more and then the rest of the time not animate very fast and be zero opacity. So finally, if we turn off all the hide, all the stuff, we should see that when I get lower down, so there should be no dust. And then as we get closer, I didn't wire it in, did I? I didn't wire it in. I didn't. I was so close. I was getting so ahead of myself. There we go. There we go. So as you get closer, the the dust starts to appear. And then as you fly further away, the dust will disappear. Ta-da! So that is... That's, I'll do it something like that. Anyway, I'd, I'd spend probably about six hours finessing it. <laughs> but we don't have six hours here, I'm afraid. But that's how it... Uh, that's yeah. how it went. That's how it went. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, are you ready for another question? Oh, yeah, always. Uh, let's have a look here. Um... Uh, oh, what, oh my goodness, what, what have I done? Um, uh, Multimoo was asking, my question is, dramatic pause, uh, how do I generate a non, I don't know, I'm just going to say these words, uh, how do I generate a non-linear vortex tunnel in, in, in quote marks, like you might see on Doctor Who or Star Wars? But non -linear, non linear vortex. So ah, I see what you're saying. So yeah, I, how the I understand. Goes. Yeah, 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 I understand. Um, Okay, so again, so many ways to do this. The the simplest way I think you could probably do it is with a whole bunch of emitters, but it depends how complex you want your level to be and or where you want it. You know, this this may not be the method that actually works for you, but we're gonna we're gonna rock with it and we're gonna see where we end up. So I'm just gonna turn kaleidoscope off. There we go. So I'm just going to make one part of my tunnel, my non-linear tunnel, and since we want it to look like a, an awesome vortex, 
I'm going to just add some special effects to it. So maybe it's going to glow a little bit and it's going to be like a, a more interesting colour than pink. Okay, there we go, something like that. Let's uh, go to the special effects page. Let time run so I can watch what these effects are doing. Let's just go crazy. Let's just give them all the effects. Not boiled it. Okay. Then I'm just going to, for now, because again, it's always good to just test things out to see if you're even going down the right track. I'm going to get an emitter. I'm going to just ask it to emit this ring. I'm going to say emit speed in that direction. There, like that. Let's just see if that's doing roughly what I want it to do. Yeah, kind of. So it's emitting the objects and well, they're, they're falling because it's it automatically sets um, emitted objects to be movable, but we don't actually want it to be movable when it comes out. So I may have to just quickly say, don't have any gravity for now. Okay, so that's looking good. So then we want to emit more than 20. And I don't know, we give them a lifetime of I know, six seconds just for as a guess. Okay. So the reason it's bouncing like that is it's the helicopter's going into it, look, and it's bouncing into the helicopter. <laughs> that, that, that tumbly tumble you just saw. Oh, yeah, look at that. So that, that makes me realise that you should just make it not glide off for now. Okay, so we can go inside our vortex, see what that looks like inside our vortex. Yeah, it's starting to look rad. Okay, now I'm going to get turn off the grid a second. And I'm just going to animate the emit position a little bit using the precise move gadget. The reason I'm using the precise move is I don't want it to change the direction they're emitting in. So, action recorder, and let's grab that, and then I'm just going to be like, mm, non-linear movement, <laughs> something like that, and I guess, and then I'm also going to get an action recorder, and I'm just going to cycle through the colours, so it's going to be a, a rainbow, non-linear. The reason I'm doing that is it you will see in a second, and the movement. Hmm. So it's glowing a Whoa. bit too much for my liking. Oh, I, I, was, I was just... Uh, I hadn't seen it just yet. And then I looked on the Twitch screen and I was like, oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god. There we go. And then if you need to emit more, you can just, you know, uh, it's already emitting at max speed, unfortunately. There's ways of fixing that, but we won't go into that at the moment. So what I might just do is... <clears throat> Excuse me. Extend it by multi-cloning that way a little bit, just to make it a bit longer. And then I'm going to make it a bit looser because I think it will look better if it's looser. And there we go. Hey. Ah oh, yes. Non linear sort of time vortex type thing. <laughs> I think that's exactly Again, what they're after. You can really finesse that with the pieces yeah. as with everything. You can put you know more particles and stuff going through. I mean when you're doing stuff like that it's it's really good to just play with the the grade tool. So if I get the grade out and I in fact get a camera here John is going to hypnotize us to his beach core army. That's that's the idea, yeah. <laughs> I love your honesty. Yes. Beach core army. You. It's not not really beach core for a very reputable company. So um, <clears throat> all I've done here is I'm just sticking a camera in so I can um, put some nice depth of field and stuff like that. I'm just going to see where this tunnel ends so I can actually put the camera further down so that I can go all the way down to there, which is great. So press play, let's get in there, move that around so then the tunnel's a lot longer. 
And then finally, let's mess around with the grade effects. Chromatic aberration is always good. You're in this tunnel, so it's going to be a bit weird and glitchy. Maybe some um, the ghost camera movement blur would be quite good on this. That's going to give it a sort of really trippy psychedelic pincushion it out. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. And then go yeah. back. And you know, there we go. You have, I mean, it's it's a Maybe. blurry mess, but you know, it kind of looks kind Maybe of like some kind of time lord, you know. Yeah. Just need <laughs> the music. <laughs> there we go. Um, off. Everyone's being really tactical with their answer questions today. Oh, they're waiting no, they're, for they're, the they're, end, and then they're spamming, well, aren't they? No, they're, no, they're all like working. It all works with each other. So, for example, off the back of that one, uh, not to Diamond ask, why do emitted objects become move? This is more of just a general question. Uh, why do yep. emitted objects become movable? Why do they not maintain the properties of the original object? Ah, that's because, so the emitter here, uh, I'm emitting it with velocity. And to emit anything with velocity, you need to make it movable. Um, right. If I put that to zero, um, the things that get emitted stay um, the, the setting they were. And then to move it, you're going to have to put your own movers and stuff on. But for this, I didn't want to have to stick a mover onto it as well and set the direction so I just I just relied on that speed I knew it would be movable so then I just made it no gravity and that kind of overcomes that problem so it's about doing it the easiest way and it's also an optimization because you would imagine <clears throat> if I had to stick a mover on every single object that's you know that there's a cost involved in that so mm. that is why on that particular occasion let's turn off this great gadget yeah there we go Okay, we've got 10 minutes left. Right, what else let's can ask we squeeze another in? one. Let's ask another one. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, oh, this is, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, Herc UK, Herc UK, Herc, Herc, I can't remember. Uh, when creating an object from multiple clone, when creating an object from multiple cloning of shape, like the beach buggy suspension, could you show how that sculpt slash shape can be then be edited, negative shape or spray painted? I seem to have issues doing either. And I seem to sculpt into shape. Uh, I think I, I f right. no, I think I understand what you're saying. So let's just let's just do that thing. So I'm gonna go into sculpt mode, and then I've got a sphere, and then I multiple clone that sphere. But I'm, you've got to make sure you stay in sculpt mode. The easy way to tell if you're in sculpt mode is when you hover over a shape, you you'll see the shape appeared. But outside, you just see the outside. You know, if I'd done this, it kind of looks the same. But actually, they're individual items, um, which are very expensive for one thing and not not practically useful either. Anyway, so you multiple clone like this, but I think what you're saying is the problem is you can't then move it later, which is true. Yeah. You can't. That is one of its like major downfalls. You can still obviously like um, whoop, negative shape cut out of it you know and you can move that negative shape inside of yeah. it but you can't move this long thin shape you've made and the reason you yeah. do this um multiple cloning stuff is there was a whole bunch of reasons but recently um the curve tool has been fixed to now work on the grid which it didn't before which is like super yes. amazing so the fact that this works on the grid and the Especially with the the DS wall, which will make it even more clear because you you move the curve tool in different ways with the um, the various yeah. the various uh, control methods. Um, what am I doing? I forgot my mind. You can stretch it out like this, and the you can put these points onto the grid as well, which you couldn't before. So you can now curve it on a grid, which is one of the things that I was trying to overcome before that right with the the multiple clone stuff so actually lots of the time you're better off using the curve shape and then you can grab and move the curve shape later which is which is the downside of this method yeah. here I hope that helps and I hope that explains nice. what I think you were asking but I'm not entirely sure um, I know we've only got five minutes left, so I thought I was just going to very sneakily tack on to the end um, something that I'm, I'm going to show a bit later in the week anyway. This guy. 
but I showed I was showing Tom earlier the cheek. What could John just just be showing? just a sneak preview of everything <laughs> that, that I'm working on? Just keep everyone excited and. Oh, everyone's like yes. It's got. Uh, that's how you get inside. Look, the little back hatch lifts up, and then Tom mentioned earlier. He said, "Ah, oh, so it's gonna, you know, float on water, which would be cool." And but I was you curious. can do cool water and dreams, but the problem is, if you want it to sort of react and have splashes, you have to start sticking the object off the things that are gonna go inside of it. So like each of these beach corp containers and the track and everything, and it would just get prohibitively expensive. Yeah. And since I know this is a toy, and you know, usually when you've got a toy boat as a kid, you know, in your train set, you're actually just driving it around on a carpet and making like hur, hur, kind of like yeah. toy toy boat sounds. So with that in mind, I just made it so it's got um, like roller bearings and like hey. a little steerable wheel that's going to power you along like a boat. So then it drives around on the carpet. It's going to be going to be super rad. So still Perfect. still working on it at the moment, but that's going to be yeah. done soon. And then no, be... John. Those those uh, folks at Beach Corp really know how to. Uh, they know what they're doing, they, don't they? They keep delivering, don't they? They they keep delivering. They know what they do. Yeah, they oh, do. Uh, Julio says, "What? I can't take it into my bath." No. <laughs> I mean, you could, but it just sink. I expect you know. Yeah. Maybe later. Oh, do you ever like toy boats? Yeah, yeah, that's the next one. Maybe later. Um, I mean, I had a f I had a fun chat with Mark Adami, one of our incredible coders, and he had made about eight years ago this really cool water simulation, and he showed me, and I was like, oh man, you've got to add that to Dreams at some point. And he was like, yeah, that's a really good idea, yeah. John. So I'm gonna like, this is definitely not confirmation of anything at all in any way. Right. Loads of disclaimers, but I'm gonna keep hounding Mark Adami in his spare time to wow. try and make water and add it to dreams and it's a really hard thing so it's not an easy thing that's ever going to happen but you know i'm gonna thing. i'm gonna fight for it just pick, keep poking mark yeah and then you um, know maybe this boat will eventually then float for, for realsies it can roll for now it can roll for now yeah um silver jones quickly answer your question uh what's the next jam after connections so our new community jam went live today and today's new jam is science explained <gasps> uh, which is actually quite an interesting one, which I think is going to be quite a cool. Uh, Man, a cool I wish game. I could enter that one. That'd be yeah, rad. Don't do it. I yeah, won't. Be unavailable for Beach Corp. Unavailable for Beach Corp to enter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, Science Explained is the new jam, which Live Now is here for the next two weeks. Um, we have got the, you can go play the Hall of Fame for. Uh, my mind's gone blank. Which one was it? Blah. Uh, which one was it? It was. Um, Expect the Unexpected Jam, um, and then you can also go play the entries for the Connections Jam, which was awesome. Um, John, could you add a Just Been Cleaned mode for your game where they're all where they are all dirty and worn? That may already be the case. <laughs> yes, of course, because if you because uh, if you uh, open a brand new Beach Court product, it's going to be squeaky clean. Squeaky clean, isn't it? Like squeaky, squeaky clean. clean. In fact, very uh, very quickly, I can demonstrate what it looks like if something is clean. It doesn't. In my mind, it doesn't look as good if it's squeaky clean. By the way, but yeah. no, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's got life to it. Wargarble wants it. the boat to do a big loop. <laughs> what kind of loop? <laughs> the big loop, I think. The, the, uh, big loop. the, the loop de loop in your train. Yeah, your one so far. Uh, oh no, that's not clean. So that is that is basically, um, and then you make it even more shiny look because you know it's it's yeah. brand brand new. There we go, that's squeaky. It, that's, that's what it looks like after before years and years of playing. It's with it. it's so shiny. Yeah, look at that. I personally think it looks better when it's got this slight bit of. I think personally it looks better too. But stop. <laughs> But no, no one, oh, no, no one heard that. Come out. No one can hear me. Oh my I goodness! Hear anyone else. In oh, no. I don't know where the cable's gone either. Oh, I know that you goodness. can all probably hear me, but I've got oh yeah, let's it all hear John panic. Wait. He can't Where's hear gone? us. John okay. cannot hear us. Okay, he I'm back. Hear me right now. I'm back. <laughs> Yay! Welcome back, John. Uh, that was hilarious. Uh, awesome. Well, there you go. You got your little sneak peek at a beach court, a new beach court product. Incoming to shelves. John, thank you for answering a load of. Uh, questions today? Uh, my pleasure. Uh, 
we will check back in with uh, Beach Corp in a few weeks to see how everything is progressing, I imagine, uh, if they've got some free time in their diary. I'm sure they will do. I'm, I'm sure I can talk to the uh, the CEO and uh, Yeah, see we, we can, can have a good chat. Uh, we're going to send everyone over to Keld Jones uh, today. We're going to nice. raid Keld. Uh, raid! We'll be, back, we'll be back on Thursday uh, for a lovely community creation stream. Um, uh, which is actually going to be the second part because we asked for a load of suggestions from the community last week. We, are, uh, we actually got far too many suggestions. So we're going to fill this week's up with community uh, picks again. So uh, it'll be a stream completely dedicated to suggestions from the community. So thank you for everyone that suggested things. Um, and yes, uh, Jamie and I will be chatting to uh, Dream Bubble people on Friday, which will be really exciting because, it, again, it's their birthday today. Uh, so happy birthday to them. John, we love you lots. I love uh, you too. Community, we love you lots. Uh, we shall speak to you on Thursday. Have a great rest of your week. Goodbye and go enjoy Kel's wonderful stream that I'm going to send you over to. And then there's that weird countdown before we do a raid. So I'm going to start doing it now. We're going to say bye and then you'll all be over there. Bye, okay? everybody. So bye, everybody. Bye, bye, everybody. bye. 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 bye.